So I've just come off a call with a company which is relatively early stage, They're looking at EIS, and they wanted to investigate and explore what the R&D tax credit relief is in the UK and whether it might be applicable to them. So here you get a chance for you to listen in, uh, dive into this call where I speak to them about it. As you can see, I'm actually in dialogue via Google Meet with this particular uh, prospect. Uh, so... Um, as I say, you get to, to just listen. I've muted them out and kind of concealed their identity so there's no kind of confidentiality issues. Uh, but hopefully you find it useful and maybe some things you can pick up from it for your own business. And uh, obviously, if you want to reach out and discuss R&D for your particular business, please, uh, my contact details are below in the description and it'd be great to explore it with you. Anyway, let's dive on in. The R&D tax relief, as you're probably aware from your previous kind of experience of it, it's been around for a long time since uh, 2000 um, and it applies to all companies all different stages in their kind of life cycle so there's no kind of like unlike where you've probably seen with SES and EIS where you've got like time limits and things there's no sort of time limit with R&D you can be any age of business uh, to be able to qualify so that's point number one when you when you sort of concerns I suppose um, where we are now I mean basically what, what the R&D looks to do uh, looks to reward uh, companies, got to be a limited company, um, for taking uh, financial commercial risk in developing new products, new services, etc. Um, there are some quite key kind of criteria you need to satisfy. And in the last kind of two or three years, the uh, emphasis and the scrutiny has, has ramped up to make sure that you do kind of jump through these hoops. Um, HMRC kind of got a bit swamped with the claims of the past five, ten years, um, to the point where they've kind of gone, whoa, 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 uh, let's make sure the right companies are getting this relief. Um, and there's been confusion in the marketplace regarding, I think, uh, what is and isn't R&D, really, put simply. Um, and I think there's been a kind of a, a misconception that if you are just creating something new, then it's automatically R&D. Or if a solution doesn't already exist, so you're creating something to fill that gap, it's automatically R&D and it isn't for, uh, for tax purposes. They use uh, these specific guidelines uh, the the HMRC abide by and that they're in the law. And there's basically two, well, three gateway tests, really, I suppose. First one is going to be a project, one or more projects. So there's going to be kind of a beginning and an end to it. So something you can get your arms around. Um, the second key is that you've got to be seeking... This project has got to be seeking some sort, some form of technological or scientific advance. And that advance has got to be in the entire marketplace um, globally. So it's basically saying, you know, we say for, you, for your particular business, the food supplement business, it's saying, um, are you looking to uh, create something that's appreciably better that's already out there? Are you in some way ex perhaps extending knowledge or capability? Is there something within the additives or the supplements, sorry, that you're either creating in a novel way um, or in some ways doing something completely novel or different? It's kind of, we can discuss that in a moment, the details. That's point number one. And then point number two <clears throat> is even if you do achieve in advance, how obvious is it to a competent professional? So you could still have an advance, but if it's kind of really obvious, so if you're kind of, um, you know, you are experienced in the sector um, and you're kind of thinking, well, this would be novel if I could achieve it. And to be honest with you, I think these particular additives, I put them together in this formulation, I'm pretty sure it's going to work and it does. That isn't enough. You've got to be able to have technical uncertainty. So it's either got to be something along, you know, is it kind of, fee is it feasible from a theoretical perspective? You know, will these formulations, is there a formulation that would have this particular outcome? I'm not even sure. Or if we, we are aware of broadly what the formulation might be, we're not sure how it might react in uh, from a practical perspective application. So it might be that, you know, when you put all these, these ingredients together, it's going to explode or do something weird or have some horrible side effect. Um, those sort of, so there's a three project, advance, technical uncertainty, are the sort of three things you've got to satisfy. Um, and then the kind of a, the story you tell as part of an R&D claim then is uh, explaining what process you went through to seek to seek that advance and those how you sought to overcome those specific technical uncertainties. So there's got to be kind of a journey there and that's kind of what they're interested in. It's that kind of, you know, it's almost like a war story, I suppose. You're trying different things and perhaps they're not working and, you know, you're experimenting and there is a process you're going through um, as opposed to, well, we did this, this and this and it worked. 
doesn't really sound like R&D. Um, so that's kind of, that helps. That's a kind of broad brush uh, application, the rules. Does that kind of ring any bells? Or it's just aware of there, the one limit we do have um, is going back in time. You can go back to accounting periods ending in the past two years. Okay, great. And one of the things just here that could be problematic, just to put cards on the table, is it's quite frustrating. The way the relief works, it's a cost-based relief. So you get relief on the costs you've incurred. Okay. So quite often where it, this can hit stumbling block for companies is, you know, you didn't actually the right thing as you, you know, obviously bootstrapping it, you guess you know, as you doing it yourself. Um, what you can, the only costs you can qualify or you can include are staff costs, um, yourself and any teammates, team members uh, who have been paid through payroll. So gross salary, employers and I, employer pension contributions. Now, in some cases, uh, often, you know, if it's an owner-managed business, they'll be paying themselves not a lot necessarily in the early stages. Director, it might be a, a nominal salary. If there is any profits, maybe dividends. Um, but that's one thing. And then the other sort of two or three other areas you can claim on is subcontractors, or if you outsourced any of the work to a third party. Um, and then for you, potentially quite key is materials you've used in the process, the R&D work. Yeah. So if you bought ingredients, formulations, and you've yeah. used them up, discarded them, if you've kept them for final product, you can't uh, yeah. include it. But if they've been discarded and whatever, you can include that. And then the final thing, element, um, power costs, utilities. Exactly right. That's it. It's got to be used up in the process. That's kind of what the it's a, the the actual strict for this particular cost I'm talking about. They call it consumable items. So you've been consumed. Um, there's like a famous sort of uh, the most famous example of HMRC trot out is which I think was much to their annoyance. Was like I think like Formula One cars being developed. Can you imagine all the kind of technical work that goes on? But then they go on to use that car or if it's some sort of amazing multi million pound piece of kit. The companies spent ages, they've been building it, and then they go, oh, it works, let's sell it. And HMRC, well, you've sold it, you can't have it now. You, you know, you've, you've been rewarded by the marketplace. You've had your money, you can't have the R&D as well, kind of thing. Um, that's the sort of look, the delineation you're looking at. So there we have it. That was diffraction of conversation, me bleating on, poor guy. Um, we did obviously a lot more detailed discussion around their particular product and how the app rules might apply. Uh, but again, hopefully useful. That's kind of like a real high level 10,000 foot look at the R&D rules. Um, so uh, yeah, that's useful. Uh, my contact details should be below. So uh, please get in contact if you'd like to explore this for your business. Thanks for watching.